Good morning together in Herzgetriebenes Business and Marketing in unserer Facebook-Gruppe. Ich bin die Shelia, wie ihr wisst, und heute haben wir ein spezielles Interviewgast bei den Thrive Talks. Und wir werden gleich zu Englisch übergehen. Mary Claire ist zwar ähm, Belgierin und zum Teil in Deutschland aufgewachsen. Ähm, ihr Vater war stationiert in Deutschland. Du kannst äh, die Zuschauer sicher begrüßen auf Deutsch, Mary Claire, oder? Ja, hallo, aber das ist ja fast dasselbe als in, wie in Englisch. <lacht> hallo. Das, das geht auf jeden Fall gut. Ihr seht ja, sie kann, sie kann gut Deutsch sprechen, aber sie fühlt sich wohler in der englischen Sprache. Und heute werden wir ähm, über Thriving als Solopreneur oder Solopreneurin sprechen. Es geht um dich, es geht um deine Gesundheit, es geht um deine Energie, es geht um deine persönliche ähm, physikalische ähm, Ausstrahlung, aber auch um deine Herzausstrahlung, die von, von innen herauskommt. Und der Titel des heutigen Videos ist Health is your business. Und jetzt ist der Punkt, wo wir auf Englisch übergehen. Also schneide dich an, halt dich fest und hör gut zu. Wir werden langsam reden. Mary Claire, you are the energy for experts, experts. Please let us know, like, who do you work with in your daily business? Well, the people who come to me are entrepreneurs. Um, we have an echo. Oh, you have an echo? Yes. Um, hang on. Let me grab my my headphones. Maybe that will help. Because that's a little bit annoying, huh? Yeah. Yeah, let me take care of that. Sorry about that. Let's see, that's why you're organized here. Let's try again and see if that's better. So uh, I work, I love working with entrepreneurs, with busy professionals, with influencers, game changers, and I call them experts. Um, and when they come to me, they come to me because they don't have the energy to fully expand their dream or their potential. Uh, so they're living under the capacity of that potential that they have. And I think that's a heartbreaking thing. So what I do is help them get that quality energy so that they can fully expand. And of course, at the end of the day, so they can live the dream, the ideal lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's so, so important. Right? Yeah, a lot of a lot of experts that, that I talk to are lacking in energy. They have a lot of big dreams and big goals for their business, what they want to create in the world. And it just it feels sometimes overwhelming for them and they don't have they're, they're tired, right? They're they're tired or they're they're ausgepowered is what we what we would say mm -hmm. in German. They're putting all of their energy into building their business, into creating their website, into marketing, into getting out there in front of their ideal target audience, into um, the acquisition process, making sales and getting people on board, delivering the services that they're doing. So from your from your professional opinion, Mary Claire, when you work with clients, Where is the energy lack coming from? What are what are some of the areas that you can identify? Well, firstly, it's important to understand that energy is everything and energy comes from all areas of life. Uh, it's not only the food that is giving us energy and that is um, a misunderstanding that most professionals have. You know, when they don't have energy, they think, okay, Let me grab a coffee or uh, chocolate bar, <laughs> yeah, or uh, eat some junk because that delivers a peak of energy right away. Um, but that's not only uh, the only source of energy. Uh, energy is a frequency, and nature, everything in nature, is frequency. It's a vibration, mm -hmm. and so our cells are actually electric electric so they're uh vibrating and the higher that vibration the more energetic we feel and mm -hmm. what we send out will always come back you can call it the law of attraction but mm -hmm. it's also uh, a very physical science so um and now i lost my thread um can you repeat the question <laughs> so okay, it's Monday morning. It's a bit early too. Yeah, it is so, early. yeah. So it's like, what are the, what are the areas of of okay. yeah that you see energy energy lack um, 
coming from, right? Yeah. So everything is energy, but I see that most professionals are only addressing one source of energy and that's then usually their food. Mm -hmm. And then I see many professionals go on another diet because they believe that they can kind of resolve that issue by going on another diet, uh, mm -hmm. eating healthy. Um, and of course, it is a good, a great start to, to eat healthy. But um, there's the physical food, of course, that we put in our body. But then, because everything is energy, we forget that our thoughts are energy too. Mm. I don't know, if you wake up and you think, oh, not another day, how is your energy feeling? Like mm. instantly. So the thoughts that we have that we put into our mind, that is what brings energy too. And so that is something that's very nourishing, can be very nourishing and uplifting, or it can bring us down in, in a way even that we get depressed with the thoughts mm -hmm. that we think ourselves. So um, the mental uh, food is certainly another energizing food that we want to take care of. And then thirdly, of course, it's there are relationships, our personal life, how you feel is how you show up. And I, I'm sure that everyone here is listening has these moments now and then when we just had a row with a, our spouse or... No, uh, never. <laughs> and then you're sitting in front, you have to be productive in front of your computer and your thoughts are dwelling off to the words you said that you didn't mean or didn't want to say. So our personal life, it's so important. We bring that to our business as well. So that is another source of energy. It's the, the soul, it's the heart. What are you doing to nourish the heart and the soul so that you feel good and that you can bring that kind of energy to the business, to your yeah. desk? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and I think that's what, for me, Mary Claire, this series is like kind of all about. So it, it's about how you can thrive as a solopreneur, as an entrepreneur, as an expert in, in your field and like how you can show up to your your job that you've created for yourself, your your career, your your business, whatever that you've, you're doing here in this world with like just energy and, and life force. Like in German, the word would be a Lebendigkeit. And um, not only is that just a joyful space it, it, that we can be in, you know, that's a that's a great space from which to go at your goals, but it's also really just highly attracted to other uh, to other people, right? Like when we're when we're in that space of life force, it's like God's just coming through us, and it's something that other people want to be around. It's what they want to they want to have some of that. So it it's something that we profit from on a personal level, but also on a on a business level. Would you agree with that? Oh, totally. And a story came uh, to my mind when you were uh, saying that people want to be around that energy. Um, <clears throat> when I, I don't know if I can na name someone, well, you know her, she's amazing. Um, when we started working together, she was very low on energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, I stopped traveling, I stopped getting on stage, I just stopped doing all these things because I'm too exhausted to travel. So I ju I'm just not doing them anymore. And then there's this brilliant woman not giving her brilliancy or not spreading that message anymore. So, um, and actually when she started working with me, was like only a few months in and she said wow this is amazing everyone everyone wants to be around me i'm attracting new yummy clients as she called them um and specifically men they all wanted to be around her. <laughs> working in the men's world actually but she was like wow this is amazing everyone wants a little bit of that energy yeah. And that is what I was talking about, you know, you send that out, that vibration and people pick it up and then they can send it back to you and interact in a different way. And that goes far away. That can go to your business partners. It goes to your clients and comes back and it goes to your partner and comes back. So that's why it's so, so life changing. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And that's and that's exactly why we have the title of this today's Thrive Talk as your health is your business. Right. It's like so everyone get out their pen and write this down. Your health is your business and everything that you do to take care of you, to to um, nurture your vitality, to nurture your life force is going to pay you back. Well, I'm getting chills. It's going to it's going to you know, pay back for your business um, in many fold. And it's going to be a kind of energy that's more than just productivity, right? We're always we're always focused on productivity, putting in a unit of effort, getting out a unit of, unit of results, working on your or, or not working on. I don't like to use the word working on, but nurturing your vitality, nurturing your life force is one of those um, leverage things you do in your business because you literally you put in a little bit of effort into your nourishing your soul and your heart and suddenly your attractiveness you know grows tenfold so it's it's one of the most worthwhile things you can do and, and besides that it leads to just having a wonderful life right and a, a wonderful happy and, and healthy life so let's let's dive in today mary claire because we wanted to give a little bit of um just some 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 life force for this week you know like if we could just jump out through the screen and touch people on the other side and say like just for the next seven days today's monday from today monday to next monday what can you do to nourish your own life force? And let's start with that first pillar that you talked about, which was physical food. And I want to share a little bit of my story, Mary Claire, because you and I worked together and it was, you know, totally life changing for me. And what it's one of the reasons you're an expert in my team and why my clients have access to your materials and being able to work with you is because I got such a benefit out of it. And it was it was the physical aspect, which is the food part. Right. So that was sort of a space that was back in 2014. And I think when I first came to you, it wasn't so much for me about energy. It was more about I had just been putting on weight. I've just been sitting in front of my computer all day long. I was eating junk food kind of like on the side. I was getting a puffy face. I wasn't wanting to show up in my videos anymore because I didn't recognize myself. And I just wasn't feeling uh, like myself. And I, I didn't want to put that image out into the world. So like you talk a lot about, you know, showing up authentically in, in your business. And it just didn't feel authentic to me. And really, when you can't recognize yourself, it doesn't feel authentic. And we started with that first piece, which was um, working on, on my food. And I will never forget, Mary Claire has a um, sort of an assessment that you do. And, um, you know, you kind of kind of say like, this is what I eat every day. And I thought I was doing great, you know, like, I don't know, like I was eating meat like four times a day and I was doing coffee in the morning directly and maybe a bowl of cereal and then a sandwich for lunch. And I thought it was fine, right? Um, I thought from a caloric intake, it's probably pretty okay. And then when I started working with Mary Claire, what I realized was I wasn't giving myself any vital sources for my for my cells. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that, Mary Claire, what what we what we worked on and what you work with other clients on. Yeah, the physical food um, is actually it's opening the gateway to everything else uh, because it all starts with energy and your food can give you that or it can take it away from you. So the typical day that you just described is your typical day back then, but it is a typical day of most entrepreneurs, actually, that is a very unconscious way of eating. And eating healthy is actually about becoming more conscious what you put in that body because that's your vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how you show up or not, right? Yeah. Um, and so what I work on is first we take out the food groups that are really putting you down and that are weighing your eyes down and that create that puffy look around the eyes and because mm -hmm. that's the first thing your clients see when they start working with you. Yeah. Wow, she looks tired. Is she gonna yeah. be up for the job? Tell yeah. <laughs> in my in my case, it was probably the, uh, too much alcohol drinking. Too much alcohol. <laughs> well, everyone has its sweet spot and sweet and and weakness, of course. Yeah. But that's what we work on. And if you remember well, in the beginning, we just took it down step by step. We didn't go like 
over no. move the needle all the way around so we looked at okay how many times a day are you eating meat for okay how about bringing that back to two times yeah. and so we did that for every food group the alcohol meat dairy gluten Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, I think, where you became aware of all the junk that you were eating. It was yeah. even more than you thought it was. Yeah. And so, so we lowered that intake of junk and then we replaced the other half that you were leaving out by um, real food. What do I mean by that? Vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, or anything that has the life force still intact life ends, enzymes all the vitamins and so you put that in your body and i remember so well that after a week because we said okay we're gonna take this slowly and after yeah. we said, okay i'm all i'm all the way to the other side now and it feels amazing it did i remember it that did. we just switched over week time to the other side yeah, and I can remember, Mary Claire, sorry to interrupt you, but I can remember like my whole body was tingling. It was like a it was like an all over orgasm every day because my, my <laughs> yeah, because my cells were just getting so much life force energy from from all that. Well, I, you know, I was doing the kind of raw raw food like vegan, like just tons of vegetables and, and green smoothies, green juices and salads and all kinds of stuff like that. And my body was just coming alive. Right. And um, not that not that everyone has to go. I mean, I went vegetarian and I, you know, I I, st I still eat highly a lot of fruits and vegetables. Like when I go to the supermarket, I'm mostly in the produce section. Right. Since then, since working with Mary Claire, but not everybody has to go that far. So what what can the, the people who are listening today just do like if they just do one thing in the next seven day so every day to just get a little bit of that life force introduced back into their life if they're not already doing it maybe they are already doing it but we don't know yeah it's very easy start with breakfast because how you start your day is how you will keep doing things during your day because you will create cravings or not mm. <laughs> that's a uh, very simple concept so how can you do that by greening up your body and in the morning there's nothing as easy as making a green smoothie i mean it takes just as long as taking that first cup of coffee and if you just replace that first cup of coffee which will create sugar cravings during during your day more coffee because you're peaking up up and down and crashing um so when you replace that by something green, green yeah. and you just take that as your breakfast and you can even take it as a snack during your day you will cut the cravings um when you do that a week i promise you your belt will feel looser your your skirt will button down quicker better mm -hmm. um, and you after a few days already you will feel how your energy is going up and it's not all the, all the time coming down again so it will create a sustainable kind of energy yeah. and so yeah the the results are amazing just green up your morning and you will feel that at lunch instead of running out and taking uh, out a, a a slice of pizza or a whole pizza or a, a crappy sandwich to eat behind your desk you will feel like mm, I, I feel like eating a salad or making something yeah just yeah. fruit or vegetables that's how it quick it goes absolutely Mirica, you have you have I think you had a, a lead magnet with uh, some how to make smoothies can we post that underneath this video to give oh, them yeah. to have yeah. a look Okay, we'll do that, guys. So we'll 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 get you linked up to how you can make a smoothie because I remember when I did my first one, I didn't know how to do it. I I was kind of on my old my old way of making a smoothie was putting in some frozen blueberries and some ice cream and some milk. <laughs> that was my idea of a healthy of a healthy smoothie. Yeah. But later later I found out you know you need a lot of greens, as particularly like you can use spinach and bananas and mineral water. Like those three easy ingredients are something that you can really quickly get. Started started with so we'll post that link so you can have a look at that
Networfeeds five days, video every day, and the shopping lists are included, so you have no excuses not to do it. <laughs> it's very good. good. <laughs> very good. So we'll do that. So the next area that you talked about, Mary Claire, was um, how to nourish your mind with with thoughts, and you talked about waking up in the morning. So. Let me tell you how I wake up every morning and what's the first thing on my mind. Today, I woke up and I was concerned about getting the dog walked <laughs> because <laughs> I knew we had this interview coming up this morning. But on a, on a typical morning, I oftentimes wake up and I already start before I even get my eyes open or maybe even if I wake up for, before the alarm, I'm already thinking about everything I need to do today, especially concerning with my business. And I know that a lot of entrepreneurs have that same issue. You know, their business is kind of their life. It's the thing they think about all the time when they're kind of off in their uh, zone and not listening to the people and being present to the people around them. Usually they're thinking about their business. Like, what do I need to do? I need to get that autoresponder set up or I need to contact that, um, follow up with that client or whatever. So that's not a great way to wake up in the morning already thinking about your to do's, but a lot, it happens to a lot of us. And, and there's not, I mean, we can't choose what we wake up to in the morning thought wise. I mean, I haven't figured out how to way to do that, but so what do you mean when you say, feeding yourself with good thoughts like so how how would that look for you in the morning if you were waking up with thoughts of just your to-do list running through your head um well actually i've been come going through some challenges myself so how was i waking up like with a blah feeling and mm -hmm. i thought wow uh how will this day go and i was really challenged and then i knew that because we have to keep reminding ourselves all the time right mm -hmm. uh, so we have a good habit and then we slip away out of it mm -hmm. and so i had to grab myself together that way as well and the only way to do is to say with the first blah thoughts that come come up say stop mm -hmm. like it's it's a new habit actually that you create mm -hmm. and at first it isn't easy you know when you start you wake up and you start making your to-do list and the f is the first thought that you have to tell yourself stop and you really have to do that in a conscious way just stop mm -hmm. yourself for a moment because yeah. then you create a little bit of space to to think about that what am i doing here right yeah. so um i made it a new habit again uh to really prime my my day with good thoughts as I prime myself in the morning with uh, good food. Um, and it was say, stop. And the th second thought was a thought of gratitude, for instance, you know, just five minutes. And you can do that while you're still snoozing in bed. I do it that way, you know, before I get up. Um, just five minutes, I think of my children, how happy I am that they are happy. It's the small stuff that really starts coming into your head, you know, the little things that are nice memories, for instance, love, the love that you have for your partner, or um, just the nice things, or that you're feeling good, that you're healthy, that you have so much more than you already think and we're mm -hmm. complaining a lot, you know, yeah. and, you know, just think of everything that you have, not of all the things that you have to do, um, but the things that you don't have, don't think about them. Just prime yourself with, I have a roof above my head. I have food. I have the ability to do what I love doing. We forget about that when we're making our mental to-do list, right? Yeah, and yeah. so um, also think, what do I want to do? You know, just replace the word have to do by want to do. Want to do. Yeah. And that helps really. Like in a few days in, I already felt a shift in my energy. I felt like, okay, I'm getting up. And yeah, I feel like doing it again instead of, okay, I have to get up because I have to. That's a yeah. whole different feeling. Absolutely. So it's simple. Just stop yourself after the first a uh, negative thought that you have and replace it with a very conscious thought of um, wanting to do things, feeling like doing things. And then the gratitude is a big, big mind shifter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
And and just for just for some people out there who are are listening, because I think I think how we make that shift from positive to negative or from negative to positive thinking, hearing a bit of an echo on my end as well. I hope it goes away. Um, everyone does it in a little different way. So, you know, like my, my business partner, Sandra, she gets up and she does her morning journaling. Um, for me, I can tell myself stop all day long in the morning when I'm laying there. It doesn't help me. I just have to get up. Like that's my stopping things is just saying, all right, if I lay here, it's going to keep going. If I get up, get on with my day, it's going to subside and or just getting out the door, like even before the dog got here. I don't know. Look, guys, see the doggy. You'll see if you, you can see him over there. He's having a sleep. He's exhausted. But mm. even but even before he came this weekend, you know, last week on Friday, just getting out the door in the morning, putting on some good music. I was listening to Adele and I was singing and just um, like. I mean, dancing outside. I mean, the Germans always think that I'm crazy. And um, <laughs> I, I came back. I came back inside in the morning, and I had a VIP half day with a client. And she doesn't live too far from me. And she said, "Hey, how are you? And what's going on?" And I said, "Oh, it's a beautiful day." And she could see out the window, uh, like you can see now. And she was like, it, it, "You don't live too far. It's gray and raining here. Did you just say it's a beautiful day?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's a gorgeous day." And she's like, "Do you have the same weather as we do?" And I'm like, "Yep." But but I was just like, you know, I had been outside. I had gotten, I had, I had nourished that, that thought vitality with just some good music and moving my body. And so mm -hmm. I think for everybody out there, just what can you do this week for the next seven days in the morning to catch those in that, that negative thinking and shift it? Like what, like try some different things out and see what works for you. It might be just like Mary Claire. She says, stop. For me, it's just getting out of bed and getting outside. Maybe for you, it's something totally different and, and maybe it'll change over time. So maybe what I do to shift uh, my 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 thinking this week won't be the same thing I'm doing next week, but just have a look at it. Right. Yeah. And sometimes changing the context helps so well. That's what I do every day because uh, I live alone in this big house now, as, like since years. But sometimes it feels lonely and then you're working on a screen a lot. So there is not that much physical like face to face contact yeah. with people. I think many uh, entrepreneurs can relate to the um, that situation in their business so just get out of the house like you do a walk in nature really connects again within but also what i love doing is i just go to the cafe because i know there are other people around me and there is where i write i journal or i write on my book so changing that context and then i come back and I feel so much more alive. It's the energy yeah. of other people, of course, in a nice setting. Um, yeah, changing the context really works as well to shift that mind. Yeah, and, and I think differently. Yeah, and I think that's particularly um, important for this time of year. I don't know how you how yeah. you have the same thing, but I get really. I, I grew up in Florida where we had sunshine all year long, and when I'm in Germany, I get started as so soon as as soon as the dark starts to come in, you know, the sun isn't showing up as much and I'm not getting as much vitamin D. I start to get sort of a depressed feeling like, a, you know, that I have to, you know, watch out for because um, sometimes that your hormones will shift and then it'll start to feel like you really have a depressing life when in fact, it's just kind of like a lack of vitamin D <laughs> that's going on. So yeah, well, so let's talk about the last one, which is, you know, nourish your heart. So let's talk about what what can we do this week in the next seven days to nourish our heart? Let's let's just see if we have some ideas, Mary Claire. Yeah, what I love doing um, when I was so sucked into my business and working, 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 and I love working. Uh, I just <laughs> I, I get so much energy from working. I'm a worker. I'm a doer. Uh, but at some point, I could feel like if I don't slow down, I'm going to end up where I once was. So mm. I had to take it a step back. And so I was thinking, actually, all the things that I'm doing, I love my business, but there's more to life than just business, right? Mm. And especially people who are living alone by themselves as a single, Um it's a danger that's always lurking around the corner that you are working many more hours than someone does with a partner. Mm -hmm. 
um, yeah. because there's no one to take into account and that's easy you know I take my decisions myself by myself but it also has a downside and that downside is that you don't stop working and you're only doing what you have to do the to-do list right so at that point I asked myself okay how can I do more of what I love doing again yeah in my personal life then um, so I made a list and I recommend it, I warmly recommend it that you make your to be list, right? Mm -hmm. And it's all small stuff. It is like you are doing like put up your favorite mu music and dance for, like a crazy woman through the house. <laughs> the <balcony. laughs> or do it, or do it outside where everyone's yeah. looking the way I do it. Yeah. <laughs> you can interact, uh, uh, attract some people to have an interaction with. Um, so dance like a crazy woman or um i i used to be a musician but my instruments are like quiet silent mm -hmm. because i put all my energy into my business so i thought okay let me pick up my bass again and play every day mm -hmm. it's a, it's a simple thing even if it's only for five minutes but it already changes the the vibration of your heart because it's nourishing you with what you're really passionate about and love doing and it's like you can feel it when you breathe it in it's mm -hmm. oh, it, it feels like home again right yeah. for me it's picking up that huge bass and just holding that thing and then the deep vibration of those strings feeling them go through my body that's like ah oh, i'm home again and home is where you are living this mm -hmm. it's the heart that's your mm -hmm. home and when that doesn't feel comfortable you just want to run away mm -hmm. you want to escape your feelings you are stuffing them with junk or you are um talking yourself down into the state that it's vibrating with that vibration of your soul so we can stay there longer so we like tossing and turning around and dwelling in our misery mm -hmm. uh, that's how we are wired um, but that's not working for us and so nourishing the soul is really about your how can you be more mm. how can you be more of you again yeah. and small stuff uh, hugging your partner more often and mm -hmm. longer it only takes nine seconds but to hold someone and to start feeling differently yeah. but it takes full nine seconds when we hug we hug and boom we let go no mm. keeping it at your chest and that too is nourishing the heart how can you be more more of you and feel that this is me this is yeah. really me sometimes yeah. we lose ourselves with all the work that we're doing all the time and i can tell you if you start like this week just one week five or seven days uh and let's keep it measurable okay measure your energy right now on a scale from one to ten where is your energy level right now in those three areas physically mentally emotionally and um by the end of the week after you changed your breakfast meaning coffee into a green smoothie did that for a week after you woke up and you were feeling grateful for the things that you have and then thirdly after you are being more you in the little things of life that matter so much that make such a difference after a week measure yourself again in those three areas and just mm -hmm. observe what happened for you what shifted for you i kind of yeah. sure when you do those three things things will have shifted yeah we have a question here too thank you for that for that um summary mary claire um we have a question from Arika. she's asking if she needs a plan or a to-do list to do such thing and not to forget them and here's my answer and maybe you have another one mary claire but yeah. I would say definitely do not make this conversation today a to-do list because we've got enough stuff on our to-do list. Yes. And it doesn't even matter if you do one single thing that we just talked about or recommended. All that matters is, is that you see something for yourself or you, you awaken to a, a feeling, uh, you remember something about yourself that you forgot, um, that you just have a moment of awareness in the morning when you're reaching for your coffee. Like, 
just let what you heard sink in and see what happens. But please don't make a, a plan or a to-do list out of it because here's the thing that I see solopreneurs doing when it comes to thriving in, in their self is they get into the mindset of I have to work on myself. And they, they make working on themselves um, like a gap. So I am here, but I need to be there. And so they make themselves wrong, feel wrong for where they are. You're not wrong where you are. You're exactly where you need to be at the moment. And if we, if you can awaken up to something even better, great. But even if you don't, that's okay too, because you're exactly where you need to be at the moment. And the, the next thing is, you know, we don't need another to-do list where we just, you know, hit ourselves for not doing it, you know, like be, be kind to yourself. And that's also a part of this vibrancy, vitality, life force is just um, seeing what you see, um, implementing what you want to implement or not. It's not like you need to um, put yourself in that state of like, I got to do this or otherwise I'm not going to be vibrant. That's exactly what gets us down the dark path of, of, you know, we're just focused on, on trying to be different than what we are. Or how do you see that, Mary Claire? Uh, exactly the same. And, you know, when you make a to-do list, uh, it's always about I have to. Uh, that's what to do means. You have mm -hmm. to. And this is about being gentle for yourself. It means take care of yourself in the first place. And when you do that, everything else will follow up in such a more smoother way. That's when you start thriving. That's when you feel like doing things again. So that's a huge difference between having to or wanting to or feeling like doing things. The only thing that, um, like, if you feel like right now, like only taking one of these three uh, tactics and commit to that for a week it will already help if you only feel like waking up and feeling gra uh, grateful that's okay and uh, it's about taking the first step always just and whatever that is for you yeah. yeah it always leads to a next because you will start feeling differently and then you will want more and that's the reward of just doing one thing for yourself you're worth it i mean yeah. You are so worth making a change in the things that you don't feel good about. Yeah. yeah. And that is so, yeah, that's being gentle. Right? That is being gentle. And another thing that comes to mind, Mary Claire, is like, you know, I, I am always in touch with Katie and Alyssa. And uh, Katie and Alyssa are also like vibrant life forces. And what I, you know, see is who who I choose to surround myself with. So like just the fact that you're in this group and also Erika showing up to this conversation, surrounding yourself with people who are focused on that life force, on that love um, for ourselves and for others, that makes all the difference in the world. So like even if you're not at that point where you're you're ready to live it yourself, that makes a difference. Like I used to, I used to be more focused on showing around other solopreneurs who were all like revenue driven and success driven and getting there faster, quicker, further. And I, I started to realize this, like being around that kind of mindset all the time is like, it's like an alcoholic going to a bar. Um, I, I, I don't like that energy. It gets me all kind of like worked up and, and spiraling in that, in that old direction that I was going. And so today what I try to do is I just try to surround myself with other people who have similar values, who also care about serving their clients um, and doing a great business, but at the same time, who are concerned about thriving as a person, thriving in this world, living living a vibrant life. So maybe that's a, something that's a good input as well. Oh, yes. And it's that's your authenticity, right? When we think of we want to lead by example, uh, it's who you are as a person. That's the leadership that you uh, own yeah. or not, right? So how can you improve you so that you can lead by example? Because what what is it that people pick up from you? It is that energy. It is that who you are in the core of your heart. Mm -hmm. What you do, what you stand for, how you live, it's about the values that you live, right? Mm -hmm. And we sometimes neglect those, we ignore them because we have so many other things to do. 
and but it is really about that core who you are that's what you lead with yeah. that's what people love about you and yeah. why they work with you remember shaya uh, when you started working with me why you worked with me why yeah. because you had no idea what the heck i was doing i had no idea i had no idea i saw mary claire in I, we used to go to the same mentor in the us um which was fabian fredrickson and we were in a group together and i just saw mary claire showing up at the meetings in the group with just such life force and vibrancy i didn't even know what she did or what she was you know what she was standing for at the first but i just thought this is someone i want to be in her energy i want to be in her life force in her i want to be near her so i just reached out to her and said i want what you have can i can we just kind of please talk about that <laughs> so yeah that's what people lead with uh, when you're an entrepreneur it's that vibrancy um it's that thing that you have around you and they can't put their finger on but they want the same thing as you have yeah. and that's why people work with you that is what attracts people to work with you right absolutely so it, that is why it's so important to take care of yourself first before you start taking care of your business and this is why i talk about this all the time your health is your business, business. Yeah. it's your responsibility to take care of yourself yeah. and it's your business because it all starts with you if you don't take care of yourself first there there is no business there is nothing absolutely absolutely it's right there those are very beautiful closing words, Mary Claire. And I think this is the most beautiful conversation today. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. And I'm sure there are people out there, hopefully, if they can understand the English, getting a lot out of this. I hope so too. Yeah. Mary Claire, where can they, people listening, find out more about you and your work? Where can we find you online? Well, they can go, come to my website, energyforexperts.com. We will post the link. And yes, if you feel like greening up your day you don't know how to just sign in for the lead uh, magnet that i have there it's a challenge actually five days of replacing that first coffee with a smoothie and i will explain you you get a video and recipe and a shopping list in your day every day and if they have any questions <clears throat> sorry about that they can always email me and uh shoot their questions away so I'll, I'll get back as soon as i can with an answer for them so energyforexperts.com they can find everything right there and they can even Great. enter my energy cuisine to get started with some lovely easy recipes <laughs> to yeah to just experiment with that thank you so much mary claire we'll post that link directly after the talk and guys right to us after you've listened to this, tell us what you think. Like, um, what what touched base with you today? What did you see? What did you hear? We can say a lot, but we don't know what's you know what's getting through to you. So, like, what did you see? Right, right in the questions box, and Ulrika, or in the questions box, in the commentary, Terry. Ulrika says, "Great, thanks. It was a great conversation. You're very welcome, Ulrika. Thanks for being here, and thanks for letting us see you with your comments. We're really appreciative." So this week, um, next Thrive Talk, I have no idea when it's going to take place. It could be Wednesday. It could be fr uh, Thursday or Friday at the client event. I haven't decided yet. So keep your eyes out uh, during the week for the next Thrive Talk. Until then, keep thriving in your business and your life. And see you soon. Bye, Mary Claire. Bye.